I'm here. The story of Queen Elizabeth II. From February 6, 1952 to September 8, 2022, Queen Elizabeth II reigned as monarch of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. She surpassed Queen Victoria in 2015 to claim the title of British history's longest reigning monarch. Following the passing of her father, King George VI, on February 6, 1952, she was crowned queen. Throughout her 70-year reign, she contributed significantly to the modernization of the British monarchy and served as a revered leader for the UK and all the Commonwealth nations. She is renowned for the unwavering commitment to duty and service. She has traveled to more than a hundred countries and has performed millions of engagements during her reign, giving her the golden opportunity to interact with numerous world leaders. She got married to Prince Philip in 1947. They have four children together, Charles, Andrew, Edward and Anne. Queen Elizabeth is known for her love of dogs, particularly corgis. In this video, we recount the remarkable life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II from her birth to her passing. But before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos, documentary and biographies, only on Spectacular Biography. Early Life Prince Albert, Duke of York and Elizabeth Bowers Leon welcomed their first child, Queen Elizabeth II, into the world in April 21, 1926, in London. Most people were unaware that Elizabeth would one day rule as the Queen of Great Britain when she was born. With no pressure from being the heir apparent, Elizabeth, also known by the nickname of Lilibet, was able to enjoy her first 10 years of life with all the benefits of being a royal. The family's home on the grounds of Windsor Great Park. Elizabeth and her sister, Margaret, received tutoring at home under their mother's supervision for their education. French, mathematics, and history were among the academic subjects covered. Additionally, lessons in singing, dancing, and arts were taught to them. She and her sister, Princess Margaret Rose, were forced to spend the majority of their time during World War II, apart from their parents and safely away from the bombing of London, residing primarily at Balmoral Castle in Scotland, the Royal Lodge in Windsor and Windsor Castle. The King and Queen travelled to South Africa early in 1947, along with Princess Elizabeth. Upon her return, news of her engagement to her distant cousin Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten of the Royal Navy, formerly Prince Philip of Greece, Denmark, was made public. On November 20, 1947, a wedding ceremony was held in Westminster Abbey. The groom was given the titles of Duke of Edinburgh, Earl of Mirroneth and Baron Greenwich on the eve of the wedding by her father, the King. Apart from her traditional and ceremonial responsibilities, Elizabeth was known to favor simplicity in court life. She was also known to show a serious and informed interest in government affairs. In private, she developed a passion for horses and kept racehorses. She also frequently attended races and occasionally traveled to Kentucky stock farms in the U.S. She was among the wealthiest women in the world thanks to her financial and real estate holdings. Accession to the Throne Elizabeth's uncle, then King Edward VIII, succeeded his father, Elizabeth's paternal grandfather George V, who passed away in 1936. But Edward VIII had to decide between the crown and his love for American divorced Wallace Simpson. In fact, in the end, Edward chose Simpson the divorcee and abdicated the crown. Her life was altered by the incident, which presumptively made her the heir to the British throne. When her father was crowned in 1937, he adopted the name King George VI to emphasize his lineage. Her mother went on to become Queen Elizabeth. King George VI's health began to deteriorate significantly in the summer of 1951. Queen Elizabeth succeeded King George VI as Queen Mother in 1952 and her daughter succeeded her as Queen Elizabeth II. Coronation On June 2, 1953, at the age of 25, 
Elizabeth was installed as Queen Elizabeth II in Westminster Abbey. On February 6, 1952, Elizabeth succeeded her father, King George VI, in the role of Supreme Monarch. The coronation ceremony was televised for the first time, enabling viewers all over the world to see the pomp, circumstance of the occasion. Prince Charles, Queen Elizabeth's son, was crowned as a rightful heir when she assumed the throne. Husband Prince Philip On November 20, 1947, in London's Westminster Abbey, Elizabeth married Philip Mountbatten, a distant cousin. When Elizabeth was just 13 years old, she first met Philip, the son of Prince Andrew of Greece, and from the start she was smitten with him. Through years of correspondence, the two eventually developed a romantic relationship and made an odd couple. Philip was boisterous and outspoken, while Elizabeth was quiet and reserved. Although Mountbatten had connections to both the Danish and Greek royal families, her father, King George VI, was weary of the match because he didn't have much money and was regarded as having a tough personality by some. Great Britain was still recovering from the effects of World War II at the time of their wedding, and Elizabeth had amassed clothing coupons to purchase the fabric of her dress. Philip's impromptu contentious remarks and rumors of potential infidelity over the years have caused a great deal of public relations headaches. On 9th April 2021, Philip passed away at the age of 99. The Queen's Children Elizabeth and Philip didn't stay long to have an heir. After getting married, they had their son Charles in 1948 and their daughter Anne in 1950. In the years 1960 and 1964, respectively, Elizabeth gave birth to her second and third sons Andrew and Edward. By giving Charles the title of Prince of Wales in 1969, she firmly designated him as her successor. The ceremony was broadcast on television to hundreds of millions of viewers. Princess Diana was born into a royal family when 32-year-old Charles married 19-year-old Diana Spencer in 1981. There have been rumors that Charles was forced into the union by his family in the years since. Today, after Princess Diana was killed in a car accident, unfortunately, Charles is the reigning monarch as King Charles III, carrying on the legacy of his beloved late mother, the Queen Mother Elizabeth II. He shares the throne with his wife, Queen Camilla Parker Bowles. Princess Anne is currently the Princess Royal, and in terms of royal engagements, she is the most hardworking royal. Her Royal Highness, who is well known for her love of horses and an equestrian career that included competition in the 1976 Olympic Games in Montreal, is involved with riding for the disabled organizations all over the Commonwealth. The son of Queen Elizabeth, who was arguably her favorite, Prince Andrew, married Sarah Ferguson, though they are now divorced and was given the title of Duke of York in 1986. However, following allegations of sex trafficking, he lost his royal title. Prince Edward is married to the unique Sophie Wessex. On Edward's 59th birthday in 2023, his brother, King Charles III, bestowed upon him the title of Duke of Edinburgh as a life peerage, a dukedom that had previously been held by their father, who passed away in 2021 and then briefly by Charles himself. Grandchildren and Great-Grandchildren Prince William, the current Prince of Wales and heir apparent of the throne, and Prince Harry are Elizabeth's grandsons. They were born to Charles and Diana in 1984. For William and Harry, Elizabeth has proven to be a loving grandmother, as he and Kate Middleton planned their 2011 wedding. Prince William has said that she provided invaluable support and guidance. George Alexander Louise, heir apparent family known as His Royal Highness Prince George of Wales, was born to Elizabeth's grandson William and his wife Catherine, the Princess of Wales, on July 22, 2013. Princess Charlotte Elizabeth Diana, the Queen's fifth great-grandchild, was born to William and Kate on May 2, 2015. Their third child, Prince Louise Arthur Charles, was born on April 23, 2018, after that. 
The birth of their son, Archie Harrison Mouthbarton Windsor, on May 6, 2019, by Prince Harry, Duke of Sussex, and his wife, Meghan Markle, gave the Queen another great grandchild. And later, they gave birth to Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Windsor, another great granddaughter. The Queen's other grandchildren include Peter Phillips, Princess Beatrice of York, Princess Eugenie of York, Zara Tyndall, Lady Louise Windsor, and James Viscount Seven. In addition to Prince William and Prince Harry, she also had 12 great grandchildren. Rain. Large scale changes in people's lives, the nation's power, how Britain is perceived abroad, and how the monarchy is regarded and revered and also portrayed are all hallmarks of Elizabeth's lengthy and largely peaceful reign. As a constitutional monarch, Elizabeth refrained from commenting on politics and kept her political opinions a secret. She does, however, regularly consult with her prime ministers. After the war, Britain still had a sizable empire, dominions, and dependencies when Elizabeth was crowned queen. However, many of these possessions gained their independence during the 1950s and 60s, and the British Empire gained and changed into the Commonwealth of Nations. Queen Elizabeth II traveled abroad as the head of the Commonwealth of Nations and a representative of Britain, making a historic trip to Germany in 1965. She made her first state visit by a British monarch in more than 50 years. Elizabeth kept up her extensive travels in the 1970s and the 1980s. She traveled to Canada's Ottawa for the Commonwealth Conference in 1973 and the USA for the 200th anniversary of the country's independence from Britain in 1976. She opened the Summer Olympics more than a week later in Montreal, Canada. As a result of her visits to Kuwait, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman in 1979, she attracted attention from all over the world and gained respect. Elizabeth was concerned about Prince Andrew, her second son, in 1982, because he was a British Royal Navy helicopter pilot during the Falklands War. The Falklands Islands conflict, which lasted for several weeks, was started by Britain and Argentina. To his mother's relief, Prince Andrew arrived home safely despite the fact that more than 250 British soldiers perished in the conflict. As the first British monarch to visit the Republic of Ireland since 1911, Elizabeth demonstrated in 2011 that the crown still possessed symbolic and diplomatic weight. Elizabeth modernized the monarchy during her reign by removing some of its formalities and allowing some poor people to visit certain landmarks and treasures. 2012 saw the abolition of the civil list, a roughly 250-year-old public funding system of the monarchy in Britain and other countries that were experiencing financial hardship. Even though the Queen reduced spending, the royal family still received some government assistance. Although she was occasionally asked to make way for Charles, Elizabeth steadfastly carried out her royal duties as she approached her 90th birthday. She kept up her support of numerous charitable programs and organizations but continued to participate in more than 400 engagements annually. On November 12, 2017, Charles performed the customary Remembrance Sunday duty of laying a wreath at the Cenotaph War Memorial, while the Queen observed from a nearby balcony. This was seen as a major step toward the monarchy's transition to the next generation. Elizabeth entered politics for the first time in August 2019 when she granted Prime Minister Boris Johnson's request to suspend Parliament until October 14, less than three weeks before Britain was set to leave the EU. Prince Philip officially retired from the public life in August 2017, though he continued to make occasional appearances at official events. The pool of replacements shrank when Prince Charles' younger son, Prince Harry, Chief of Sussex, and his wife, Meghan, Duchess of Success, controversially decided to give up their real roles in March 2020. In the meantime, Elizabeth started to reduce her own official engagements, delegating some tasks to Prince Charles and other senior members of the royal family. Having dealt with several physical setbacks in recent years, Philip, who had been Elizabeth's husband for more than seven decades, died in April 2021. Because of social distancing protocols brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, the Queen sat alone in a choir stall in St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle at Philip's funeral. 
The Platinum Jubilee was a four-day national holiday held in June 2022 to honor Elizabeth's 70 years as monarch. Elizabeth's participation was constrained by health issues. In September, the Queen broke with tradition when she chose to appoint Lee Struess as the new Prime Minister at Balmoral rather than Buckingham Palace, where she had previously formally appointed more than a dozen Prime Ministers. This decision was made due to concerns about the Queen's health. Threats to Queen Elizabeth and the Royal Family Elizabeth put in a lot of effort to preserve the monarchy's reputation and lay the groundwork for its future. However, she lived through the monarchy's assaults. The once revered institution has survived many hardships, including threats to kill members of the royal family. When Lord Mountbatten, her husband's uncle, perished in a terrorist bombing in 1979, Elizabeth experienced a profound personal loss. On August 27th, off the west coast of Ireland, Mountbatten's boat exploded while he and several family members were on board. He was killed along with three others, one of whom was his grandson. The attack was claimed by the Irish Republican Army, which opposed British rule in Northern Ireland. Elizabeth experienced a hazardous situation in June 1981, when a man in the crowd pointed a gun at her while she was participating in the trooping the collar. A special military parade held to mark her official birthday. Thankfully, the gun was filled with blanks when he fired. The Queen was not injured, but she did get a good scar. The following year, an intruder broke into the Buckingham Palace and confronted Elizabeth in her bedroom, giving her an even closer call. The royal marriage was the subject of rumours when the media learned that Prince Philip was not present during this incident. Tabloid Scandals When Charles married Diana, and the union garnered media attention, of course, the years before the couple announced their separation in 1992 and went through with a legal divorce in 1996. Elizabeth was the subject of intense media scrutiny after Diana died on August 31, 1997 in a car accident in Paris. Her ex daughter in law was called the People's Princess and was incredibly well-liked. The two sons of Charles and Diana, Prince William and Prince Harry, were present with the Queen at the time at her Balmora estate in Scotland. While the nation lamented Diana's passing for days, Elizabeth remained silent and she received harsh criticism for it. Rumours that the Queen did not want to give Diana a royal funeral spread, which only served to strengthen public opinion against the ruler. Elizabeth arrived in London almost a week after Diana passed away and spoke about the late princess. Additionally, Elizabeth at first took offence to Camilla Parker Barrow's relationship with her son Charles, years before they met his family. Charles and Camilla had been dating. However, the relationship ended up due to family pressure before picking up again during Charles and Diana's divorce. She had a reputation for being a stickler for ceremony and customs, but over time she began to change. Elizabeth and Prince Philip attended a religious blessing and a reception in Charles and Camilla's honor at Windsor Castle instead of the civil ceremony where they got married in 2005. Another of Elizabeth's kids, Prince Andrew, made headlines in the tabloids in 1992 after pictures of his wife, Sarah Ferguson, and another man having a relationship surfaced. Shortly after the incident, the couple got divorced. The media claimed that the Queen had invested about $13 million in offshore accounts in November 2017. The Paradise Papers were leaked to a German newspaper, which then gave them to the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, which broke the story. The former proprietor of the lingerie business, Rigby and Pella, which had provided Elizabeth with services for more than 50 years, also published a frank autobiography in 2017 that detailed some of her interactions with the royal family. The Queen responded by resigning Rigby and Pella's royal warrant in early 2018, despite the author's claims that the book doesn't contain anything naughty. Prince Andrew was forced to resign from his public responsibilities in 2019 after years of controversy surrounding his dubious business ventures and friendship with Jeffrey Epstein, a man who had been convicted of sexual offence. Following what was the shocking decision by the Duke and Duchess of Success to step down from the royals as senior royals, the family found themselves in the spotlight once more just weeks later in January 2020. Diamond Jubilee In 2012, Elizabeth celebrated her Diamond Jubilee 
marking 60 years as Queen. A special BBC concert featuring artists like Shirley Bessie, Paul McCartney, Tom Jones, Stevie Wonder and Kylie Minogue were held on June 4th as part of Jubilee celebrations. At these momentous occasions, Elizabeth was surrounded by family including her husband Philip, son Charles and grandsons Harry and William. She surpassed her great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, who had ruled for 63 years, on September 9, 2015, to become the monarch with the longest reign in British history. Sapphire Jubilee The Queen, the only British monarch to have ever celebrated her Sapphire Jubilee, marked 65 years in office in February 6, 2017. Additionally, her father's passing anniversary falls on that day. The Queen decided to spend the day alone at Sandringham, a country estate north of London, where she went to church. At the Tour of London and Green Park in London, the Royal Guard salutes to commemorate the event. Eight new commemorative coins were also released by the Royal Mint in celebration of the Queen's Sapphire Jubilee. Platinum Jubilee Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee year was commemorated by the country in 2022. She was the first British monarch to reach that milestone, which represents 70 years in power. It featured a dropping the colour ceremony, a Thanksgiving service at St. Paul's Cathedral, a concert of popular music at Buckingham Palace, and a pageant honouring the reign of the Queen that included street theatre, music, circus, carnival, and costume. Hobbies The Queen lived with dogs all of her life. She was well known for her love of corgis. Having owned more than 30 offspring of the original corgi she received as a teenager up until the passing of the last one, Willow, in 2018. Elizabeth was a long-time race fan and thorough horse breeder. Elizabeth was not one for the spotlight and preferred quiet activities. She reportedly even liked watching wrestling on television. She also liked reading mysteries, doing crosswords puzzles and working on them. Death and Funeral on September 8, 2022, Elizabeth II, the longest reigning monarch in British history, quietly passed away at her Balmoral home at the age of 96. The public reaction to the death of Elizabeth II was one of sadness and mourning. She was a beloved figure who had reigned for over 70 years and her passing was seen as the end of an era. Just days later, Prince Charles succeeded her on the throne as King Charles III. Ten days of national commemoration of her life and legacy, long planned as Operation London Breach followed. The funeral service took place on September 19, 2022, which was conducted by the Archbishop of Canterbury at Westminster Abbey. The service was attended by over 3,000 people, including members of the royal family, ward leaders, heads of state, and representatives from other countries. The service was a celebration of Elizabeth II's life and reign and it was a time for people to reflect on her legacy. After the service, the coffin was taken to the Royal Vault at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle. The Royal Vault is a burial place for members of the British Royal Family. Elizabeth II was the first British monarch to be buried in the Royal Vault since the death of George VI in 1952. We have come to the end of this incredible life of Queen Elizabeth. Comment whose biography you think we should do next. You can also check out our all interesting documentaries by selecting a video on the end screen. Most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Until next time, have a nice day.